welcome to Sunrise Meditations on the beautiful and serene Enders Island. Today we celebrate a Christmas weekday, and I'm your host, Deacon Francis Valier. Our Alexia Divina is from the first letter of St. John, chapter 5, verses 14 through 21. Let us begin our prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O provident God, we believe that your only begotten Son, who lives with you in eternal glory, took flesh like ours and was born of the Virgin Mary. Keep us steadfast in this faith, that we may be freed from present evils and live in the hope of lasting glory. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. And now let us listen and attend to our scripture passage. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we have this confidence in God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in regard to whatever we ask, we know that what we have asked him for is ours. If anyone sees his brother sinning, if the sin is not deadly, he should pray to God and he will give him life. This is only for those whose sin is not deadly. There is such a thing as deadly sin about which I do not say that you should pray. All wrongdoing is sin, but there is sin that is not deadly. We know that no one begotten by God sins, but the one begotten by God, he protects and the evil one cannot touch him. We know that we belong to God and the whole world is under the power of the evil one. We also know that the Son of God has come and has given us discernment to know the one who is true. And we are in the one who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. Children, beyond your God against idols. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today we come to the last part of the first letter of St. John. It consists of two parts, a prayer for sinners, and then a final summary of the main points in the entire letter. The section begins with an important definition of true prayer. Our confidence in God consists of this, namely, that God hears us whenever we ask for anything according to his will. A true prayer consists in trying to discover what exactly God wants of us under the firm conviction that he always wants the very best. It is not a question of us demanding of God that he give us what we want or what we think we need. Nor is it fatalistically submitting to God who does things we don't want to happen. Rather, it is a matter of God's will and ours being brought into harmony so that we really want not just prepared to accept what God wants. Our will and God's will should coincide. The secret of much happiness is right here and is in the ultimate goal of Christian living. One thing we are particularly urged to pray for in this passage is a brother or sister who has gone astray in faith and or morals so that life can return fully to that person. However, there are some who have committed deadly sins and for them, there may not be much use in praying. What is such a deadly sin? In the gospel, the only sin that cannot be forgiven is the sin against the Holy Spirit. That is, the sin of totally closing one's mind to God and God's truth. 
Once we have taken such a step and remain in that state, there is no way that we can be reached by a loving and forgiving God. Nevertheless, it would seem that we could pray that such an attitude might change. In the final summary of his letter, St. John makes three statements, all beginning with, we know. First, we know that no one who is a child of God sins. As long as one is consciously committed to Christ and has totally submitted their life to his way, sin is a contradiction and the two cannot coexist. Second, we know that true Christians belong to God while the world is under the influence of the evil one. Being a Christian in a real and not just a notional sense and being under the influence of the world are again mutually exclusive. And then the third statement of St. John, we know that the Son of God has come to teach us how to distinguish and recognize the presence of God in our lives. By being in Jesus Christ, we are also in God, who sent him among us. This is the blessed role of Jesus, to be God made visible so that we know how and where we can find God in our lives. In conclusion, we are warned to be on our God against the idols. Perhaps we are not touched by the idols of old, but there are many other idols of a more subtle kind, which we can easily fail to recognize as such. Materialism and consumerism, the obsession with money and wealth, the cult of sex and even of the body, the slavery to image and fashion, the cult of the hero, be it in the media or in sports. Obsession with such idols can blind us to the very real needs, material, social, and spiritual, of those around us. Then we fail in the essential quality of being a child of God, that is, to love God and to love each other. After our closing prayer, we read the scripture passage and contemplate its message again. Concentrate on a thought that comes to you either through a verse or even just a small word that touches you. And ask the Holy Spirit to show you how it pertains to you and how you may spiritually grow closer to Him. Let us complete our divine reading now with a closing prayer. And let us pray. Having contemplated your divine word and embraced the sacred truths you teach us, complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Jesus be upon you always and in always. And may his generous blessings fill your day with joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you enjoy listening to these daily meditations, and if you haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button. And then also pass along the links to your friends and relatives as well. God bless you all, and have a great day.